Oh my god! The Witcher Marathon just won't end. I'm currently finishing the books, kind of not really playing the games and watching the Netflix series, which is ironic since I got the books ever since my first paycheck from YouTube. In fact, the first thing I've ever bought from this job is The Witcher Anthology, which is six books and two short stories that I've read digitally. And I'm loving it so damn much, but nobody really cares about that. Like I said in my first How to Play The Witcher video, the Witcher has been in rising popularity this past few years, even more so since the release of the Witcher Netflix series. And because of that, a lot of people are starting to gain attention on this and is considering playing the video games. I made a beginner's guide video on The Witcher Enhanced Edition not too long ago. It was a great game, but it certainly had some faults. After that, I immediately played the next one in the series, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. They fixed a lot of the issues I found in the first game, remade most of them, and removed some of the more annoying game mechanics to make the game more bearable, harder, and fun. I don't think you should use bearable and harder in the same sentence. Hmm. I finished this game on dark difficulty, and if you're not sure if you should play the game, or well, the first game in the series, I highly suggest that you watch my video on should you play The Witcher Enhanced Edition before watching this video. And so to help you guys, if you are planning to try this game for yourselves, I made this video. The rules, the guidelines, or simply the do's and don'ts. This is... The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings is an action role-playing video game developed and published by CD Projekt Red on Microsoft Windows. It's also available on the Xbox 360, Linux, and Mac. Oh, Mac. It's based on the novel series by The Witcher by Polish author Andrzej Sapkowski. And I just want to remind everyone that the game takes place right after the books, which was also the reference for The Witcher Netflix series. This game specifically includes a lot of references from the source material, and because of this, the game occasionally reveals some of the key elements that happen in The Witcher anthology, things that can spoil certain chapters, characters, events, and even the ending. Viewers and readers' discretion is advice. Now, I could just sit here and keep on explaining what the game is, but chances are if you've already played the first game in the series, or have heard or seen the more popular The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, you know what this game is. It's a mature fantasy game filled with sex, politics, magic, and an amazing story. It has a difficult but fair combat system, and it's a game that proves that CD Projekt Red is not a studio you should take lightly. Much like how I did the beginner's guide on the first game, I'll focus on the four biggest aspects of the game. Combat, character progression, crafting, and alchemy. But before that, I highly, highly suggest that you go through the game's tutorial first. It'll explain everything you need to know, and unlike the first Witcher, they fix all the problems that you might have in regards to navigating the UI and combat. The tutorial has nothing to do with the story, but it is nice to go through nevertheless. And with that, let's start with combat. The combat in The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings is, well, I can't keep on saying the full name of the game every time I say it, right? Wait. The combat in The Witcher 2 drew influences from Demon's Souls and Arkham Asylum, and if you've played any of those two games, then you'll feel quite at home here. They significantly improved the combat style as opposed to the first game, in my opinion, and it feels more tactical than ever before. You'll roll a lot, which is weird seeing Geralt too, like all the time, but with that, it greatly helped in making the combat more layered and challenging. There's an active parry and dodging system this time around, and if you don't think about your moves properly, you're not gonna last long during fights. Some of the key combat mechanics are locked behind a skill tree, which I will tackle later, but overall, it's much more improved than the first game in the series. I suggest that if you're not a fan of hard games, then lower down the difficulty to easy. You'll still get the full story, but without the hassle of challenge. Two different types of swords are available in-game, steel and silver, steel for humans and silver for monsters. You can use steel on monsters and vice versa, but it won't be as effective as opposed to using the proper sword. Every time you start combat, Geralt will always unsheathe the right type of sword, so there's not really a need to worry about which sword you should be using, but it's always a good exercise to do so as it could help in fighting both types of enemies at the same time. It rarely happens, but it happens. The combat is pretty challenging. It's easy to get surrounded 
surrounded by enemies, especially on hard or dark difficulty, even just on normal. So a good idea is to always focus on one enemy at a time. Also, take note of how close your enemies are. If there is some sort of way you can damage two enemies at the same time, try and do it. But only do so if you're absolutely sure. It's really fun to roleplay these combat sequences like an actual witcher. I don't know if that makes sense, but what I usually do is go in that mindset of which I try to get rid of the easier opponents first, before I tackle any of the harder ones. Get in their heads, literally, and turn down the fight before going all in. Get behind shields, don't spam attacks unless you're sure they can't parry it. Always check behind you for surprise attacks, use your signs when available, and please, for the love of god, be prepared for each fight. Craft better gear, drink potions, and use enhancements. I'll talk about this more later in the video, but generally you won't be needing this as much on easy and maybe normal. But you absolutely will need this on hard and dark mode, which can be extremely unforgiving. This is not a hack and slash game. It might look like one and feel like one sometimes, but it's not. Along with swordsmanship, Geralt has a short arsenal of signs to help with combat. I'll explain what each one of them does, starting with... Art is like using the forest. Using the sign will knock down enemies with a short amount of damage. It can be used as a disengage or as part of a combo during attacks. They stagger enemies out of shields and blocks and it gives you a small window of opportunity to attack a well-defended character. It usually works on all types of enemies except magically shielded ones and it's one of the most useful signs along with Quen. If Art is like using the force, then Quen is like making a YouTube apology video. You can use it once to defend yourself and make you invulnerable from any damage received, but it's rendered useless once the damage has been done. That did not sound how I expected it to sound. I'm not even sure if that makes sense. Once upgraded, not only can it defend you from harm, but it can also damage anyone close to you. It's a super useful skill, and not using this sign will make the game extremely difficult for you to play. Art and Quan is the two most useful signs in the whole Witcher franchise, and should always be used during combat. Yurden is used to create magical traps. It's a lot more useful here than the first game and it can actually help you make fights easier. Some enemies are actually specifically weak against this sign and will cause them to get staggered or stunned. You can stun enemies with Ard and Yurden and doing so will give you an opportunity to perform during attacks. What? And doing so will give you an opportunity to perform an instant kill. This sign hurls a small fireball in front of you. Upgrading it will increase the area of effect and you can set enemies on fire for more damage. Some enemies are also specifically weak against fire, which makes this sign extra useful, same as firebombs. There's nothing really much I can say about the sign, except that it's a sign that can cause damage. And that's all you really need to know. Axie lets you get in the head of your enemies and NPCs, making them temporarily fight for you. It's extremely useful in the first hours of the game, which you're still new at and relatively weak, but once you get how the combat works and are considerably buffed and geared up, you'll rarely use this anymore except for very specific instances. Upgrading this will let you control more enemies at once, but really, they're mostly distractions to give you space and breathing time. Signs are mostly used as secondary abilities to help in conjunction with your swords all of these signs are all useful in their own way. They are much more useful here than the previous game, and doing a magic build is much more possible here. Once you have the sign equipped, you can activate it by using the proper button assigned to it, and will use up Vigor. You'll only have two bars of Vigor at the start of the game, but it can be improved through character progression. Speaking of which... This is the Witcher 2 character skill tree. Every time you level up, you get a skill point that you can use to enhance one of the Witcher abilities in your skill tree. It's divided into training, swordsmanship, alchemy, and magic. When building your own girl, there's pretty much no way you can go wrong, assuming this isn't your first RPG. A good rule of thumb is to focus mainly on one branch and focus some of your free points on a second branch. You can never really go wrong on this, assuming you carefully read what each ability does, and if you somehow manage to fuck up, 
there is an option to reset your skill points towards the last act of the game. Which doesn't really make any sense, it's quite literally the last 5-6 to six hours of the game, but it is what it is. Now, you can play Geralt however you want, but my Geralt specifically is the Glass Cannon that mainly focuses on getting his damage done and vigor up. I feel like as long as you know how to engage and disengage, dodge and parry at the right time, you won't really have to need extra vitality or hit points. Just boost your damage up and try not to get hit. Alchemy is used to craft all the present potions, oils, and bombs found in the game. It's extremely helpful on all levels and is much more needed towards the harder ones. Potions buff Geralt, oils increase damage, and bombs are… well, they're bombs. Again, there is a quick tutorial on how alchemy works upon the start of the game, and it's more than enough to give you an idea on how it works. Now, each ingredient has a specific category. It's best not to use some of the more rare ones when crafting a potion. There is an option for you to use a much more common ingredient, and if it's possible, use those ones instead. I was actually super lazy to do this since I didn't really bother to learn alchemy more deeply, but I kinda regretted it towards the very end of the game when I lost every single ingredient on a specific category. It also caused me to be unable to craft certain equipments since there's no way to get that specific ingredient. So I repeat, when making potions, oils, and bombs, or just crafting in general, just try not to use the more rare ingredients unless you really have to. Or want to. In regards to traps, daggers, and all sorts of weapons and armors, you can't craft them on your own. Instead, you're gonna have to find someone that can craft that item for you. You're also gonna have to find a recipe for that specific thing you want to craft, and that requires orins. That's the currency in the game. Actually, crafting the item itself also requires orins. Orins is hard to come by in the game unless you try and grind some monsters and sell their carcasses. And that is why I suggest only crafting weapons and armor towards chapter 3 of the game. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't craft items during an earlier time, but doing so will cost orins, orins that you may need later on. But if you're okay with just grinding the orins back, then you'll be fine. Tutorials ain't really a feature. Every game has their own version of a tutorial, but this game specifically does a very good job on teaching you everything you need to learn about the game, including the game's mechanics and the combat itself. It's separate from the main story, which is perfect, and the game is super easy to learn as you play through it. And as such, I only focus on the tanks that made the biggest impact in the game. Again, I highly advise that you play through the tutorial diligently before starting Act 1. You'll be given a chance to do this once you click New Game. Meditation and getting ready is a feature that is well done in regards to this type of game. When you meditate, you can upgrade your character, your skills, perform alchemy, drink potions, or just simply meditate to pass the time. A day-night cycle exists in this game, and specific enemies and quests won't be available unless you're in the right time of day. There's dawn, noon, dusk, and night. You can speed up the cycle by meditating. Choices and consequences exist in the game, and yes, they do matter if you want your playthrough to be somewhat unique. Your decisions will shape the story as you go on, and it's not your standard good versus evil, so treat your decisions wisely. Even small things can make an impact to your story, along with some bigger ones. I'll try not to sound too spoilery, but to fully experience this game and what it has to offer, you're gonna have to do two playthroughs of this game. You have to, just to get the full experience. If you played through the first Witcher game, then I'm glad to say that they mostly revamped everything in the game, removed a lot of the annoyances, reworked how the mechanics work, and added new features to make the gameplay feel fresh. They made an extremely good job on this, and you'll find this game much more easier to learn than the first one in the series. Thank you, CD Projekt Red. True to the Witcher fandom, the game includes a lot of references to the books, references that you might miss if you skip reading them. Actually, it might even be too much. Now, I wouldn't really call this a spoiler, but if you didn't already know, Witcher 1's story starts where the books end. Except to help with new players and for story purposes, they made it as if that Geralt lost all his memories during The Witcher 1. It's not really a spoiler since they let you know of this literally at the start of the first minutes of the game, but in regards to Witcher 2, this is where Geralt starts to recover all those memories, and as such, you kinda get a recap of everything, or at least the important things that happened during the books. Key events, characters, deaths, and all other stuff are revealed here, so if you don't want to get spoiled on what happens to the books, things that Netflix will undoubtedly make episodes on, viewers and readers' discretion is advised. Now, I have a really bad memory, and by the time I get to that part of the books, 
I'm probably not even gonna notice it. You, however, might be different, so keep that in mind. Remember the love scenes on Dragon Age Origins, Mass Effect, and even the first Witcher game? Yeah, combine all that and multiply it by a billion. Okay, I might have over-exaggerated that part, but it's true. The love scenes in this game is much more mature and it doesn't have any pixelations. This is a mature game and frontal nudity or semi-full nudity... Wait, what? And frontal nudity, even not on love scenes, exists in the game. In conjunction to that, everything about this game is made with the adult mindset in mind. The choices, the politics, the relationships, concepts, and even the mechanics itself. If you're not open-minded or if you're still under 18, you might not appreciate this game as much. It might disgust you, offend you, and most probably annoy you altogether. So yeah, if you're underage, I highly suggest you play something else. Like I said in my first Witcher video, the game design just oozes with passion. CD Projekt Red was obviously a fan of the books and was probably using everything they learned in the books to craft this game. They did a very good job on this, and I really do believe that. That's why I'm super excited for what The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt has to offer. Now, I haven't even played the game yet, and I'm not planning to anytime soon. I'm mostly focused on finishing the books first, and I'm almost halfway there. I think I'll be finished by the end of June, but not really sure. I feel like I should just savor the books, because they're really good and it's worth the read. I'm not gonna rush through finishing the books, mainly because they're really enjoyable to read, and I really hope that you can understand me on this. But when I do though, expect a beginner's guide anytime soon. I'll tell you when I finish the books. You can carry over your Witcher 1 Geralt onto this game. This includes all the choices you did in that game, the gear you have equipped on that save, and a percentage of gold you had, again, during that save. Although unlike Mass Effect, that save file will only affect the world in a small way, so don't worry about skipping the first game entirely. With that all explained, on with the tips and tricks. The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings is an extremely good follow-up to the first game. The game is extremely overhauled and with that spawned all new tips and tricks. And so here's a list of all the tips and tricks I've gathered, thought of, and found online. Do the damn tutorial. I can't stress this enough. That tutorial does an extremely good job in explaining everything you need to learn about the game. From combat to just simple game mechanics. So please, do yourself a favor and just do the damn tutorial. Playing the first game is nice, but it's not necessary. I suggest that if you don't have time to play the first game in the series, just watch a quick preview about what happened in the first game, which there is plenty of on YouTube. Loot everything. Yes, this can cause you to get over encumbered relatively easy, but I still highly suggest that you do so and sell everything you don't need in a merchant. To a merchant. What? If you're still over encumbered, there's usually a person you can talk to that can give you an external storage space as an option. Quen is your best friend. You need Quen, even on easy or normal. The Quen sign is super helpful as it's easy to get surrounded by enemies and letting that happen is an easy way to get you killed. Do a Witcher role. While it does ruin the lore and immersion, adding the role mechanic intensively increases the gameplay to a point. So roll. Roll for your life. But don't just rely on it the whole game. It's a good idea to keep on practicing other mechanics embedded into the gameplay. There will be a lot of moments where you wouldn't really have space to roll anywhere and the best thing you can do is just stand there and try to parry or block any attacks in your way. With that said, Riposte is a super helpful skill that not only helps you reduce damage but also acts as a counterattack in the process. Other than that, if you're still outnumbered or overpowered by enemies, which is always, then I suggest that you just experiment on different attack styles. Use Jordan, throw bombs, use traps, there's a lot more stuff you can do than just using your sword and rolling. Level up wisely. There's only a limited amount of skill points that you can use to invest on your skill tree. The first 6 points are necessary on the training branch, so think about which skills you're gonna get. Don't bother with arrow reduction. Reduction? What the f- What? Don't bother with arrow redirection. I finished this game twice, and I'm currently doing my third and final playthrough just for fun. And in all my playthroughs, I found that spending points on arrow redirection is just not worth the skill point, and I personally think that it's better spent somewhere else. The same goes for dagger throwing. Yes, it can be useful in certain moments, but throwing bombs feels like it's more powerful. And to be honest, much more useful. Furthermore, creating and crafting daggers uses a lot more materials, especially orange, so... 
Yeah, I personally wouldn't do that. A lot of people would say parrying is just a waste of skill points and I actually disagree. Yes, you can dodge and roll out of the way most of the time, but like I said, there will be moments where you'll have nowhere to roll to, and you're gonna have to parry and repost to help remedy that situation. There's some few stat boosts that you can get during your playthrough, especially in the prologue, which you can get depending on the choices and conversations with other people. And while they are somewhat helpful, I suggest not looking up on this any further and just roleplay it the whole time. It's much more fun. This might be a little pet peeve of mine, but please, before playing this game, read a little bit of the lore. Just a little bit. It'll help a lot when it comes to names and locations. You don't have to memorize everything, just learn a little something on YouTube before you start your playthrough. Reading journals also helps with this, as it also helps in regards to certain quests. In addition to this, leaving the subtitles on will help you from keeping you from getting lost. What the hell did I just say? Adding to this, leaving the subtitles on helps you in keeping you from getting lost. In relation to my third tip, gather all the herbs you can get, including all the items and materials you can get from monsters. You can use them as ingredients for potions and crafting materials for swords, armors, bombs, daggers, oils, traps, and potions. Silver is rare. If you do find some, loot it and do not sell it. Merchants do sell these, but it's very rare, and if you do find one, it's gonna be really expensive. Now, it might just be me because of my playthrough, but I've always played this game on dark difficulty, so I could be wrong. Also, again, there's no crime mechanic, so yeah, no need to worry when looting homes. Your choices will matter and will continue to matter towards the rest of the game, so think about it carefully. You can just trust your gut, but I don't know, if you're doing a second playthrough, I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter. The cat potion is a lifesaver during dark dungeons and caves. It also allows you to see enemies through walls, so always have one in hand. Save often. I wish I could say that you can never have too many saves, but after that 300th save, your PC will start to slow down. It'll only matter when you're loading a new game from a save, but other than that, if you're just playing the game normally, you're gonna be fine. By that, I mean your PC will only slow down when you're loading a save. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right. Speaking of saves, save towards the end of Act 1. Don't ask why, just do it. You'll thank me later. In conversations, the orange option is always the one that will take the conversation further. I suggest picking the white choices first so you can get a better understanding of what is happening, and it also gives you the chance to expand the current topic. Get the whirlwind skill. It's a super useful skill when fighting large groups of enemies and it's a good idea to max this skill for a lot more damage. Damaging enemies also usually but not always staggers enemies, meaning the whirlwind skill will also help you have a little breathing time when chaining attacks. Preparation is key. Drink potions, use oils, set up signs. This will give you a better chance of surviving the incoming fights which usually seems unfair but trust me, it's really not. Craft better gear. Unless you're not fine on grinding for materials, then please always try to craft better gear. This is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I'll need to explain any more than this. Although in relation to that, be careful on what kind of materials you are using. Don't use rare materials unless you're doing it on purpose for some good gear or you know what you're doing. Still for humans and silver for monsters. I feel like you should know this by now, but I think it's a good idea to add this here nevertheless. Have some fun. No need to keep on fighting enemies. Just go around town, play dice, go on fist fights, visit the brothel. Brothel? Brothel. Brothel. Is that how you say it? With that said, explore every nook and cranny you can find. You might find quests, monsters, treasures, or best of all, more quests. It prolongs the game and levels you up in the process. <clears throat> okay, um, okay, it, it's happening. I'm losing my voice. Back to the blocking thing. You can't parry for too long and parrying doesn't really get rid of damage altogether. So think before you block. Unlike yours, an enemy's cran cannot be dispelled. If you find someone who has cran on them, you're gonna have to wait until it disappears. Okay, the game did not really explain this, but from my understanding, poisoned means you're under the effects of a potion. Just something to keep in mind if you're planning to do an alchemy build. 
rather than the usual swordsmanship or magic. At some point, you're gonna find this, but mutagens are set bonuses that are applied to Geralt's current abilities found in the skill tree. They are semi-helpful and should be thought about before slotting. The game has, for some reason, has stealth sections. During the sections, it's a good idea to use scat, which will help you avoid enemies. On an unrelated note, think about which specific recipes you're gonna buy. They can be really expensive and unless you're willing to grind for loot to sell, you're better off just buying the ones you need. Change your hairstyle. Why? No reason. It's just cool. Some quests can't be completed until the next chapter. It's really confusing sometimes and will need to be googled to figure out. Now as much as possible, I don't really like to google stuff, but if you are gonna google it, try to google specific things, just so you won't get spoiled. And lastly, and the most important part, have fun. This game is amazing and should be experienced slowly. Do everything there is to do in every chapter and try to go to the next chapter knowing you fully experienced the previous one. I love this game and give it time and I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it too. And that's it. I'm sad to say that nobody really plays the first two Witcher games except for some die-hard Witcher fans. They are fun and exceptional games that is worth your time and much attention as The Witcher 3. They're just so overshadowed by the last game of the series that they're pretty much ignored despite how cheap they can get. They are great games on their own right, and if you are currently playing the game, I really hope that this video made your playthrough a little bit easier. Like the video if you don't dislike it, then dislike if you don't like it, share it with your friends, and if you do like it, consider subscribing to The Phantom Heart for more, and click on that notification bell to be reminded of my future videos. I'm Sis, and thank you for watching. Actually, wait, I have a question for you guys. So I'm currently playing Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition, cause like, out of all the videos I've done, Divinity Original Sin 2 is the most requested video I've ever had. So I'm making a beginner scat video on that one soon. The problem is it's gonna take a while for me to finish it because it's a long, long game. It's a lot more complex than the first one. But after that, what video do you want me to do next? I have a lot of ideas, a lot of plans and doing videos on, but these are the three that stood out. So which video do you want me to do next? The Dark Souls series, which is considered to be one of the most popular in terms of difficulty, it's supposed to be hard, which I think could be fun. I played the first game, it was fun, it was great, and I'm open to visiting it again. I'm just really hoping that they fix Blight Town this time around. Next is Resident Evil 2. Now, I have a problem with horror games, and that's I can't play horror games? Like, I mean I can, but my god, the PTSD I get from horror games. <laughs> I don't want to play Resident Evil 2. And next is Dead Cells. Now, out of all these games, Dead Cells is the closest one I have that is related to Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is also the video that made my channel what it is today. I've watched my old Hollow Knight video, the first 10 seconds of it. Oh, actually, you know, the first 20 seconds of it. Uh, the cringe. <laughs> Do I really speak like that? It's really sad. Like, I, it, I, I can't, I can't. It hurts. It hurts me. So, these are the ones that I'm planning on making a video next. I'm hoping that you guys can help me on deciding on which video I should do next. I'm really not sure which one, so I'm gonna be reading the comments. So please leave a comment below. Yes, I do read the comments. I find them interesting. Again, I'm Sis. And thank you for watching.